These are my 10 essential everyday carry objects. To give a little context, I'm a professional designer slash photographer. Collecting these items has been an organic process that has happened naturally over the last 10 years. I've added chapter marks to every object. So, to quote Cypress Hill, feel free to jump around. Now let's start with an easy one and save the best for last. The phone. This here's iPhone 12 mini. This might be the longest phone run I've ever had. It is either this or the Nokia 8810, AKA the Zippo. That was a cool phone. I've tried to reason myself to buy one, a few times actually, but there is no WhatsApp. People could not add me to those lovely group chats. It's so fun trying to stay present in real life and react to every half a thought that some random guy, who I don't even like, comes up with. I used to update my iPhone to the newest model. But nowadays, the updates are quite minor, since the base level is already so high. This little thing can do pretty much everything I need. Although, I think I would have updated to the iPhone 15 if they made a mini version. In my opinion, this is the perfect size for a phone. Small. If one of my three followers happens to work at Apple, please bring back the mini. Thanks. The keys. These here are a wild Frankenstein type of deal. Let's start with the carabiner. These things will hang on my jeans always. I had searched for the perfect carabiner for years. I have watched all the EDC videos from YouTube at least twice, but nothing. They all have that titanium futuristic stealth fighter type of deal going on. Or they go for that brass heritage vibe, where you are obligated to shower with your raw denim jeans on and apply musky beard oil once an hour to buy one. Or there are those that have some sort of an overly engineered multi-tool function that enables you to build a house with it. Yes, yes, I have thought every facet of these. But what is this carabiner then you have? It is an actual carabiner. It is made for climbing. My little sister is really into climbing, and I stole this from her. This thing can actually hold my weight, even with that wet raw denim on. It says here, 80 kilograms. These keys aren't going anywhere, but they almost did. These were not perfect either. I had to do a little customization to these. Like I said, these are made for climbing. These are made for those ripstop folks, happily living as one with the elements, not being able to rip their clothes. They were quite rough for a city boy like me. This little clip ate through my Japanese raw denim loop within a week. Then I remembered that I had just bought a Carhartt vest. So, I googled where the nearest hardware store was located, since I had only lived in this city for the last 15 years. Went and bought a metal file and shaped the edges off. And the kids was the moment when I became a man. I also fixed that loop with a red wool thread, but more about that in the later videos. Okay, let's move on. This here is a leather key holder. It is made by Noah Marion in Austin, Texas. It is a prototype I bought from him when I was there for South by Southwest. So if you like it, you can't get this one. Sorry, I've had this for five years now. I have to say that this carabiner plus keys type of lifestyle, although super handy and keeps your pockets clean, has some downsides. You sound like a janitor every time you take a step. It might keep burglars away when you wander around the halls at night, but at the office, it is super annoying. This little thing solves that, and it is made of leather, so it will wrap your keys snugly over time, and it ages well, as you can see. I also get to oil this once a year. Mmm, I love it. And then there is this little thing. It is a rock pendant from a necklace. This rock is a green aventurine. I got it from my girlfriend. She is made out of 100% cosmic fairy dust 
and she's really into rocks. This rock apparently has some magical abilities that I don't fully understand. Stuff like, and I quote, It encourages perseverance, strengthens leadership and determination. Sounds good to me. And hey, who doesn't like magic? Plus, she is super hot. So I'm not going to start yet another fight about a magical rock. I'd rather argue about normal rocks. Those I understand. So there. Since necklaces don't go well with my handyman and shower with my jeans on type of vibe, I attached it to my carabiner. Okay, moving on. The camera. Okay, like I said, I'm also a photographer, and this here is a film camera. It is the famous M6 Classic, made by Leica and Silver, as you can see, and attached to it is my Leica Summicron 50F2 version 5, or the Leica Summicron 35 F2 a spherical version 1 lens. This here is a grail combo for so many photographers. This here is the shit. I've also added a black enamel soft release button and a leather strap to it. I bought this strap over 10 years ago. With this, I only shoot black and white film. During the summer, that film stock of choice is Kodak Tri-X 400 that I shoot at box speed. But during those dark winter months, I switch to Ilford's HP5 that I push to 1600. Mm. Black and white perfection. I also develop and scan the films myself for the ultimate quality control purposes. Yes, I'm neck deep in this craft. That being said, I'm not going to act all cool and say that the gear does not matter, since it so does. When I shoot with this camera, the images are better, but not because this camera is better than the other cameras. Oh no, this camera here does not get to make any decisions on its own. It is all manual and mechanical. You have to make all the decisions and turn these magnificent little knobs yourself. It does not even have autofocus. Mm. I love it. The photos from this camera are better because of the way this camera makes me feel when I use it. This makes me feel like I know what I'm doing. I'm calm and in the moment. I shoot mostly candid portraits like these. This might be some sort of form of street photography, but not the purest way to do it. I don't identify myself as a street photographer, but what I basically do is hold this camera close to me at all times. I adjust the settings, aperture, shutter speed, and zone of the focus in advance when I enter a different location. Then I choose a subject and wait for the right moment. That moment usually happens when the person I'm thinking of shooting forgets that I have a camera in my hand. Then when that happens, I take one photo. Only one, not two, just one. And usually that person doesn't even notice that I took a photo. So, call that what you want. That is what I do. I've had this camera maybe for four years now, and I've carried this with me almost every day. The days I don't carry this iconic piece of photographic history with me are because of this guy. The Leica M10. A modern classic, but usually this thing lives in my backpack and is mostly used for work purposes. So it is not officially included in this video. This is basically a digital version of the M6. I'm not going to geek out and go fully in depth in this EDC video. But let me know if you would like me to make a separate video about these guys. I have also a lot of experience with other Leica cameras, like the M9. I had it for six years. I've also used the M9 monochrome, M10D, the SL lineup, and the newer M monochrome cameras, to name a few. I have also spent way too many hours watching Leica content on YouTube than I would like to admit. Like I said, I'm neck deep in this craft. 
so please let me know if you would like to see that. I might do it, and maybe even interview some of my friends who are professional photographers, if they are up for it. Okay, now let's jump to a totally different topic. The knife. Okay, now that we have established that I'm a real man, so what do real men have that the others don't? Well, they have a big-ass knife. This here is my knife. It is a Victorinox Classic SD, and I absolutely love it. I just got it. I used to carry a Victorinox Handyman, but it was a bit too bulky for my everyday use. It kept flopping around in my pants pockets, and every time I sat down, it rolled between my legs. And I'm not used to having a big hard thing down there. This is more my style. Small, but if you know how to use it, it gets the job done. This fits perfectly into that small little pocket on the right side of my jeans. This lives there. In this pocket, there is also a microfiber cloth and another magical rock. This one is a round black onyx with a hole in the middle. I got this also from my girlfriend. Apparently, it, and I quote, helps you to break free from negative thought patterns and limitations stemming from fears. And hey, who doesn't like stuff that has a hole in the middle? Plus, it looks cool and feels awesome to fidget with. This was also a necklace. At some point, I'm going to get a Victorinox mechanic. But that model is discontinued, and the prices have gone through the roof. But enough about that. Ooh, shit. I think I just realized something about these rocks. Maybe these are not magical at all. Maybe these are just a way for her to criticize the lack of my abilities as person, disguised as a gift. Sheet. In her mind, she apparently thinks that I lack, and I quote, the ability to break free from negative thought patterns and limitations stemming from fears. Sheet. Did she just call me a negative thinking pussy? That bitch. She also gave me the other rock as well. So, we can add, and I quote, the lack in perseverance, strength in leadership, and determination. Now I feel horrible. I didn't know that I'm a negative thinking, undetermined pussy who lacks leadership and perseverance. But this is just a theory. I hope it's magic because this shit here is mean. Like, really mean. Anyways, sorry. Let's move from witchcraft to more tech-related topics. The headphones, AirPods. The second generation. These are great. These don't have a noise cancellation. I don't like noise cancellation. It makes me feel really uncomfortable. I've actually thought about that a lot. And I think I've figured out why that is. The feeling I get is really primitive. Did you know that many moons ago, we humans were primitive creatures. We were wild, like actually wild. We lived in nature, in the forests. We hunted and gathered. Some of us were the hunters, and the others were the gatherers. I think because I feel more familiar with small leather goods, I would have been a gatherer. A sad and weak little man. I think that the reason why us humans have evolved to this stage we are now was because of us sad and weak pathetic little men. We were so afraid. We had to change things up, get protection, seek shelter. We actually had to invent the concept of shelter. In the forests, there were these creatures like bears, beasts that could mess you up. We had to get our backs against a wall, so no superior creature, or a normal man, who was not a weak little shit could surprise and kill us. Back then, you had to stay alert. Back then, if you had noise-canceling headphones on, and you were a weak little shit, you would have been screwed. So yeah, these are great. This is now my third video for this YouTube channel. I thought that this YouTube thing would be an easy way to make an extra buck. But turns out, this is quite a grind. I love it. The Notebook My 
go-to notebook is a moleskine with blank pages, and it's in the size, small. I use one notebook per year, and I always mark that year to the side of the notebook with a white acrylic marker. I've tried most of the notebooks, even the digital versions, including iPad Mini 6 with an Apple Pencil. But this is the best, at least it is for me. This notebook is now an extended part of my brain. I use it for everything, planning, designing, to-do lists, archiving ideas, and even scripting this EDC YouTube video. The reason why this video is so overly scripted and has way too many side notes, twists, and turns is because of this notebook. Using notebooks was a pain in the ass to get started with, but eventually you will develop a system. If you are interested but don't know where to start, look up Bullet Journaling on YouTube. It works as a great starting point. And when you have a notebook, you can also take away too deep of a dive into the magical world of writing instruments called the pens. I used to a fountain pen with black ink and a mechanical pencil with red lead. These are the end product of a plus 20 year long deep dive. I've handpicked both of these carefully. The fountain pen of my choice, Muji Aluminum Fountain Pen with Rotring Converter. But I just ordered the Kaweco Lilliput, so this will be upgraded. Yes, there are a lot fancier ones, but I prefer this one. I used to use those Sakura Micron Fineliner 0.05, but after years of use, I started to feel bad about the single-use plastic type of mentality. In general, I like to do a lot of research, more than I think is actually healthy. Then, choose a product and use it for years, hoping that it would be the last time I would need to buy that type of a product. Anyways, I use this for the note-taking part of the process. Everything in my notebooks is written with this specific fountain pen, with few exceptions. The exceptions are written, or mostly drawn, with this. A Rotring 800A Mechanical Pencil. This here is a grail piece. If you are into technical drawing, you know what I mean. The difference with this and the other mechanical pencils, other than this is cool AF, is this unique twist and click retractable mechanism of the entire sleeve and lead. Because of this oddly satisfying mechanism, you can clip this to your pocket. Revolutionary. And I mean, come on, look at this. Mmm, I love it. I only use red lead in this. The finest red lead to be precise. Faber-Castell TK color number 12 in the size. Zero, five. This is perfect for sketching, marking, underlining, and for side notes like this one's. These parts of the video have been written with this Rotring 800 with red lead. Plus, I also have a photographic memory, so using this additional color in the notebook helps me to differentiate the pages from another in my mind. The wallet. I've had this wallet for six years. I bought this from a tiny shop when I was in Copenhagen, Denmark. This is a perfect wallet now that I've customized it. There was a textile band wrapped around it. I cut it off straight away. It was a useless little thing that would have stretched and eventually broken. This wallet is made by Neu Hamburg. It is a small brand operated by two women, or that is what the guy at the counter told me. I think they specialize in women's purses, or at least they did six years ago. They still sell this wallet, but only in eco leather. So if you like this, I'm sorry, but you can't get it anymore. Shit. I forgot that I could have chosen products that are still for sale. Then I could have added affiliate links in the description and made a shit ton of money if this weird clip of mine goes viral. Oh dear. I just realized that I don't get anything from making this video. I don't even have those required 1,000 subs to enable ads. In general, I like things made from natural materials. Things that age well and stand the test of time. Things you can fix if they break. I think I've oiled this wallet six times now. About once a year, 
I collect all my leather goods and give them a bit of maintenance. Mm. I love to rub oil on small leathery things. It pleases me. My go-to oil is the boot oil from Red Wing, the gold standard of leather oils. But you have to be careful not to overdo it and soak the leather. Let's move on. The watch. Yep, I wear a Rolex, but not just any Rolex. This one here is a Rolex Explorer 114270 from 2001 in a size 36 millimeters. I briefly had the 39 millimeter version, reference to 14270, but this is more my style. Classic sport Rolex. From all these 10 products, choosing this was the hardest. The search took almost three years. I have now had this watch for seven years. This thing marks a chapter in my life I like to call becoming a man. Oh no no, that was the trip to the hardware store. This chapter was called becoming a dad. Yes, I bought this watch when I had my first child. I got this moments before he was born. So when he looks at the photos where I hold him for the first time in the hospital, He'll see this watch. This watch will be his when he turns 30. If he wants it, of course. But not 18. 30. Anyways, that is the plan at least. The other plan was to look at this thing as a wearable savings account. If shit hits the fan, I can always sell this thing. But I really hope it does not come to that. In my eyes, this watch is expensive. I originally paid half of what this watch is valued now. So if you have stuffed your savings to a digital mattress, AKA the bank, I highly recommend you study the watch markets as an option. I personally have doubled the investment in just a few years while wearing this watch 24 seven. Yes, I even sleep with this thing on. Before this, I had a Timex and I also wore that 24 seven. Just so you know that sleeping with this thing on has nothing to do with the Rolex brand. I'm just weird in general, if you haven't noticed yet. I really like this watch. This pretty much flies under the radar. I also have few straps that I like to swap out whenever I'm in the mood. For those, I also bought the original Rolex buckle to match. My tobacco colored suede strap is great for that under the radar rugged vibe. Like when I go to the cabin and get to chop some wood. Yes, I don't baby this watch at all. It is a tool. And whenever I feel like going all black, everything, I have a shiny padded black leather strap. But 90% of the time I roll with the oyster bracelet. It is that good. These vintage models have a much thinner clasp. So even working with a laptop isn't an issue. Or to be precise, this thing is neo-vintage. I would love to go for an even older Explorer version, but I wanted a watch that I did not have to protect and always remember that I had a Rolex on my wrist. I swim, chop wood, and even, if I have to, I go to sauna with this thing on. Yes, it is all fine. And if something would happen, you can always get it serviced. The only time I took this thing off was when I renovated our apartment. Anyways, this Explorer model is made originally for mountain climbing, for climbing to Mount Everest type of mountain climbing. This thing is rugged AF, but nowadays this seemed to be more popular with other free-spirited folks, like Brad Pitt, Ian Fleming, and Don Draper. Yes, the main character from Mad Men, this watch is actually the original James Bond watch as well. When Ian Fleming wrote the first James Bond, he wrote that Mr. Bond was wearing a Rolex Explorer, just like he was. But when the suits got involved, it was switched to Rolex Submariner. And as a proof that this is also great as a mechanical watch, this watch is the EDC watch of Roger W. Smith, the famous watchmaker. So there, I love this thing, but enough about the watch. I could go on and on about this, but let's save that for another video. Moving on. The optics. These I have to carry, not by choice. 
I got my first subscription classes when I was in the army. Long story, but we went to a shooting range for the first time. There, the superior creature, a.k.a. a normal man, said that we should aim in the middle of that black circle. And I had to ask, what black circle? So yeah, without me knowing, I could not see shit, and not to brag or anything. But the next time we went there, and I had the goggles on, I was the best marksman, by far. Okay, that was a bit of a brag, but I feel that I needed to compensate a bit. That rock incident with my girlfriend, the mother of my children, rattled me a bit. Sorry, these goggles are made by Garrett Late, the son of Larry Late, founder of Oliver Peoples. This model here is called Wilson. These are inspired by the music legend John Lennon. This iconic round metal frame with Windsor rims and tortoise temples come in different colors. The color I chose was matte black with spotted tortoise. These rims are classic and pretty much timeless. I've had these for eight years, and I've updated the optics once. This time I went with photochromic lenses. So these turn into sunglasses when the UV rays hit the lenses. Hmm, <laughs> magical and nerdy. Now, one more thing. The bag. If you liked this video and would like to see another one regarding my extended carry, like what is inside this backpack of mine, you can let me know by subscribing, liking, or commenting. I would be more than happy to do it. This here is a new YouTube channel, and content like this is a great way for me to practice before I gather the courage and widen my perimeter to outside of my home. Now, I thank you for sticking it to the end. And to the man, much appreciated. Have a great day.